So John, let me start with you. If you take a look at residential solar uh, here in the U.S., it's really been exploding. How much more does this California mandate add to that? Well, it certainly adds more growth to the marketplace, and I would uh, predict that more states are going to look towards California, as they often do in many other areas of the economy, and look to see uh, about implementing something similar to what California just implemented. Uh, I think it really goes to the point of solar, especially solar for your home and batteries for your home, are, are normalized. Uh, this is a step in the direction of saying this is not alternative energy. This is energy increasingly, it will be the majority of energy over a period of time that I think is frankly happening much faster than people think. So Hugh, if you take a look at say the companies involved that could benefit, what was the market reaction when we heard this? And what is it, and what's the reality behind it? Sure, so really surprising. What we saw is that uh, the solar equities really jumped on, on the news and not just the, the plays you would expect that are just focused on residential solar, the sun runs, the Vivents, even, even Tesla to a, to a degree. Or you also saw firms that only tangentially touch solar or touch, touch, touch residential solar, uh, sun power or, uh, or, or first solar, which doesn't have a rooftop product at all, jump on the news. And that's really unusual because one of the residential players will see some increased demand, but it will actually be a different player that taps into this market. Uh, the, the California mandate really uh, if, uh, is, is more advantageous to groups that are rolling the cost of solar into a mortgage. You're building a new home, you're taking out a mortgage, you're likely to put that solar cost into your mortgage as well. And the firms that did see a positive reaction uh, to the news are firms that specialise in solar finance products outside of your mortgage. Interesting. So, John, give us a sense of the market. Let's start with California. I'm going to assume that they're pretty high up there in terms of solar use already. What's the penetration rate, and what are you expecting over the next 10 years or so? Well, the, the penetration rate is in California for homes is, is probably approaching about 8%. So we still have a long way to go. Uh, and that's a big part of what they uh, put the mandate in place was to accelerate that growth even further. We do anticipate this will add somewhere between six, uh, around 650 megawatts of residential solar demand between uh, the, the years 2020 and 2023. Uh, so this is, it's a pretty significant increase in the growth uh, uh, for California at least. But, but John, this is for new homes, right? That's what the requirement would be. Doesn't it take an awful long time to get really that penetration rate up in California if you're just doing new homes? Yeah, if you just focus on new homes, although about roughly about 100,000 new homes are built every year in California. So, you know, it, it will take a few years to add up, but it's, it's a fairly meaningful amount of, uh, of homes. And I would also say that I think that uh, this enables a lot of other people in terms of companies like Sonova, which is a residential solar and, and storage service company, to provide more services to these homeowners. So not just even if you roll the uh, uh, solar system into your mortgage, you're still going to want to have additional services, take care of the solar system, take care of the power service, put more batteries on or put batteries on. There's a lot of other things that go with this. So it's not as you have to really dig down deep into the details to find how much much growth is really going to happen here, and it's actually a much more positive and greater story than it seems on the surface. Hugh, what I find interesting, though, is if you look at the price, it's much more expensive uh, solar here in the U.S. than other areas. Is it a subsidy issue, or is there something on the production and that needs to be done to have a broader implementation uh, like John's talking about? Well, it's, it's a bit of both. So if you work out, yes, yes, residential solar and solar installations in the U.S. have been growing and, so, and uh, year over year up until last year, and last year actually slowed down. And nowhere was that more true than in California. So the California market has been slowing. And we see, as John said, maybe about 8% of single-family homes, about 5% of, of, all, uh, of all households have solar today uh, in California. That's only about 1% nationally. So there's certainly no saturation issue here as to why the market might be slowing down. One issue is pricing. And in the US, we're paying about twice as much per watt uh, per, per unit of, of, of solar as you might be in Germany or the Netherlands or Australia or the other mature residential solar markets. Because you install a bigger system, you're actually paying about four times as much here for a rooftop solar system as you are in those other markets. Mm -hmm. That's a function, one, of what the industry calls soft costs, the cost of permitting, the cost of, uh, of, of, of bureau, uh, bureaucratic processes to get your system installed. And it's secondly a function of customer acquisition, the cost of marketing, finding your customer, arranging the financing, uh, to, to, to service that customer. Now, that's not so much a fixed cost as it is a willingness to spend to find a customer to install mm. a system to grow your business. So really, if, if costs are to fall here, it needs to be cha a change to the way we approach a customer, a change to the way that we, the, the willingness we, we uh, have to spend in, in finding that next customer and installing a system. So John, is that your experience, that those are the soft costs that really are holding us back? 
That, that is largely true, and he's exactly right. The costs here in the United States are quite a bit higher than they are anywhere else in the world. Part of this is in, in the way that we subsidize, especially rooftop solar with the federal investment tax credit. We subsidize at a, at a basis of cost, effectively. So we're, we're, we're asking people to, the more money you spend, the more money we'll give you. So it's a flawed construct in, in the subsidy, which you know we would like to see you know continue to move down, and indeed it looks to be phased out under current law. But the big issue, is that the United States has a very Byzantine and very complicated and frankly most of the people around recognize broken uh, power regulatory system. We need to make sure that the monopolies, the, the current utilities, are put on a level playing field and that competition and consumer choice dominates the marketplace, not decisions by politicians or uh, frankly it borders on crony capitalism with the monopolies and rent seekers. You need to have a level playing field here and when you do that then a lot of costs are going to fall out of the system because a lot of effort's been put into how do you slow rooftop solar down and how do you slow batteries going into homes and we need to figure out ways in which we set the, the table up so it says let the consumers decide, let the market decide, and I guarantee you we'll see a huge pickup in growth in residential solar and storage services.